Hi guys, Dane here, and today I'm going to be making a start on my review of The Thursday Murder Club by Richard Osman. Uh, I've met Richard Osman, he's very tall, he's about 6'5". Uh, he used to, or I think he still does actually, co-host a show called Pointless, which is a BBC TV quiz show. And I appeared on that show, so that was very cool. Uh, this is his first novel, it's a crime novel. I'm going to read you the blurb, go through and check out some of my tabs, and then I'll share my overall thoughts and rating at the end. So, Dane reads... In a peaceful retirement village, four unlikely friends meet up once a week to investigate unsolved murders. But when a brutal killing takes place on their very doorstep, the Thursday Murder Club find themselves in the middle of their first live case. Elizabeth, Joyce, Ibrahim and Ron might be pushing 80 but they still have a few tricks up their sleeves. Can our unorthodox but brilliant gang catch the killer before it's too late? So I just quite like this, they're talking to a police officer called Defritas, Donna Defritas. Um, and Elizabeth says, we bore easily. God save us from window locks, WPC Defritas. It's just PC now, says Donna. I see, says Elizabeth, lips pursing. And what happens if I still choose to say WPC? Will there be a warrant for my arrest? No, but I'll think a bit less of you, says Donna. Because it's a really simple thing to do and it's more respectful to me. And it just made me think of, um, you know, using people's gender pronouns as well. And here we learn about a character called Ian Ventham and I think this teaches you a lot about this character. The Waitrose in Tunbridge Wells has a coffee. Ian Ventham parks his Range Rover in the last empty disabled bay outside. Not because he's disabled, but because it's nearest to the door. Um, Ron sees his son and asks his son if he wants a game of snooker. And the son says, love to, but I'm shooting off. I'll play snooker with you, Ron. I'd love to. And we get this, which I thought was nice, as obviously I am a vegan myself. There is a vegan cafe just off the seafront that I found a few months ago and I'm already looking forward to a nice mint tea and an almond flour brownie. I'm not a vegan and have no intention of ever becoming one, but I still feel like it's something that should be encouraged. I read that if mankind doesn't stop eating meat, there will be mass starvation by 2050. With respect, I'm nearly 80 and so this won't be my problem, but I do hope they sort it out. My daughter Joanna is vegetarian and one day I will take her there. We'll just drop in as if me visiting a vegan cafe is the most natural thing in the world. And this is, I think, again, very relatable if you've seen headlines, headlines in tabloid newspapers. So uh, DCI Chris Hudson takes a swig of Diet Coke. He sometimes worries he's addicted to it. He'd read a headline about Diet Coke once, which was so worrying he had chosen not to read the article. It's about right. And the vegan cafe is called Anything With A Pulse, which is a great name for a vegan cafe. So we get a reference to somebody having a new house in Putney, which is right by where I went to university. And Elizabeth, um, she every day she opens a diary to a day two weeks in advance and asks herself a question. And then she answers the questions each day, like two, two weeks behind. And it helps her to check that her memory isn't going because she doesn't want to get dementia or Alzheimer's. We get this line which I enjoyed. Uh, there are silly proper tears now, I'll let them fall. If you don't cry sometimes, you'll end up crying all the time. Uh, we get a reference to something being a catch 22 as well, which I thought was funny because I literally, I think yesterday started listening to the audio book of that. And we get this, which I just thought was worth sharing with you guys. So Don has gone off on a date. At one point, Donna had asked him who his favourite author was. For Donna, an acceptable answer would be Harlan Corbin, Kurt Vonnegut, or any woman. Gregor had sagely replied that he didn't believe in books, and that you only learn in this life through having experiences and keeping your mind open. When she then raised the thorny philosophical dilemma of whether you could both keep your mind open and not believe in books, he had replied, well, I think you rather proved my point there, Diana, and sipped his water in a manner that suggested great wisdom. Ian Ventum, one of the characters in this, who's a bit of an asshole, but he's, he's reading, uh, he's listening to the audiobook of Screw It, Let's Do It, Lessons in Life and Business by Richard Branson. And that is on my to-be-read to list eventually. And we get this as well. Um, Neither Chris nor Donna had known that Maidstone had an ice ring. Why on earth did Maidstone have an ice ring? That had been a large part of the conversation on the drive there. This was after Donna had asked Chris to turn off his compilation of early Oasis B-sides. Bit by bit, Donna was intent on dragging Chris from his century into hers. I like Oasis. Does that mean I'm old fashioned? Mind you, I like the Beatles and I like you know, Johnny Mathis, John Layton, people from the 50s, Buddy Holly. And Bogdan, um, the Eastern European guy, he makes this great comment. He says, chess is easy, just always make the best move. And then Elizabeth says, well, I suppose I've never quite thought about it like that. But what if you don't know what the best move is? This bit made me chuckle. Is impersonating a priest a crime, asks Donna. Someone I met on Tinder once pretended he was a pilot and tried to grope me outside an all-bar one. I bet he regretted that. I punched him in the balls, then called in his reg number and got him breathalyzed on the way home. Nicely done. Some words of wisdom from Ibrahim, he says, Some people love their children more than they love their partner, and some people love their partner more than their children. 
and no one can ever admit to either thing. This made me chuckle as well. It's just the intro to one of the chapters. Uh, there had been a schism in the Cryptic Crossword Club. Colin Clements' weekly solving challenge had been won by Irene Doherty for the third week running. Frank Carpenter had made an accusation of impropriety and the accusation had gained some momentum. The following day, a profane crossword clue had been pinned to Colin Clements' door and the moment he had solved it, all hell had broken loose. We get another reference to snooker, which I love. And um, Joyce here, bless her old lady, she's talking about Tinder. She says, so Tinder is for dating. You post pictures of yourself on an app. An app is like the internet, but only on your phone. Jason showed me some of the pictures. The pictures of the men are usually on a mountain or chopping down a tree. Sometimes the pictures have been cropped down the middle to cut out a former partner. The pictures of the women are often on boats or with groups of other women, and you're not sure which one you're supposed to be looking at, so I suppose you take pot luck. And she says, honestly, it breaks your heart to scroll through. It's reminded me of those photos of lost cats you see on lampposts. It's all that hope, I think. Yeah, they can be a bit depressing, the old dating apps. So yeah, overall, The Thursday Murder Club by Richard Osman. Um, it took me a little while to get into it and to enjoy the writing style, but once I did get into it, I was pretty hooked. I do think it's been kind of overhyped. I mean, it says here, the record-breaking number one bestseller, and it's kind of as good as a lot of other crime novels, sort of no better, no worse. Uh, make of that as you will. But I did still enjoy reading it, and um, yeah, I mean, I'd, I'd probably give it a four out of five. So there we have it, that's what I made of The Thursday Murder Club by Richard Osman. As always, don't forget to let me know in the comments what you thought of this book if you read it. Hit that like button if you've enjoyed this video. Hit that subscribe button for more, and I'll see you soon for another bookish video. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.